Welcome to the Stellenbosch University CT facility. We are here to give you a virtual lab tour today to demonstrate all the non-destructive testing and 3D imaging capabilities available to you as a researcher or industry partner from all over the world. Please join me. We're going to demonstrate the non-destructive capability by scanning this Kinder Joy to see what's inside without opening it. The CT scanner facility at Stellenbosch University houses a walk-in cabinet micro CT scanner system for large samples as well as a nano CT scanner for highest resolution when using small samples. The micro CT scanner contains two X-ray tubes, one with a reflection type target and the other with a transmission target. Typical scan times are between one hour and four hours for this system depending on resolution and quality requirements. I will be scanning a mentor suite today so that we can see if there are any interesting features inside. The Nano CT instrument is well suited to small samples and it is generally suggested that all samples of any material type smaller than 10 millimeters in diameter be scanned using the Nano CT instrument. This is our computer lab where our clients analyze their data in-house or remotely via TeamViewer. Volume Graphics VG Studio Max is our preferred software package, but we also have other 3D visualization software available. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the SAFE Online Training. My name is Mokesh Parangandra and I'm an analyst at the Stellenbosch CT Scanner Facility. In my presentation today, I will cover the basic introduction into X-ray computer tomography and I will do so by going through the fundamentals and principle of X-ray inspection and I will go through the uh, computer tomography scanning procedure that involves sample preparation and mounting the scanning procedure in um, the image construction, visualization, and I'll also go through the possible image artifact and I'll end up with the application of CT. So what is X-ray CT? This is an industrial X-ray computer tomography or micro CT that, that involves high resolution 3D scanning of materials using X-rays. Industrial extra computer tomography is a special form of CT scanning that is meant specifically for non-medical application and it involves scanning resolution in micrometer and in terms of sub-micron scanning the, um, the CT can be or this application can be referred as X-ray microscopy or nano CT. This is very similar to the medical CT um, machine, but it differs in the sense that the industrial X-ray computer tomography offers a much better higher resolution for smaller samples and also offer high energy X-rays. In terms of the physical differences, with the medical CT, you have um, an object or a sample being scanned, being stationary, with the X-ray source and the detector moving around the sample. With the industrial CT system, we have the X-ray source and the detector staying stationary with the sample being scanned rotating 360 degrees. So what are X-rays? These are electromagnetic waves that have a wavelength of less than 1 nanometer. They were discovered by a German physicist in 18. 95, um, William Conrad Roydhagen, who earned a Nobel Prize in 1901 for the discovery of X-rays. 
Although the potential application in, in the medical imaging diagnosis were made clear from the beginning, the implementation of the first X-ray computer tomography system was made in 1972 by Godfrey Newborn Houston, who later won an Nobel Prize in 1979, and he is known as the godfather of computer tomography. The first application um, in the industrial context dates back to the 1980s in the field of non-destructive testing where a number of slices were visually inspected for any defects. The 3D quantitative application appeared in the 1980s where simple volume and distance analysis were conducted. And today, with constant improvement of the hardware and software, CT has become a powerful tool in the non-destructive um, industry, inspecting samples inside and outside, offering accurate geometrical um, measurements with a growing application in the field of quality control and assurance. So the physical um, fundamentals of any CT system consist of an X-ray source where X-rays are generated and also has the, um, the stage where the sample is mounted on and rotating 360 degrees and the attenuated x-ray is being collected by a 2D detector. And also this um, needs a processing computer where the projection images will later be converted or reconstructed into 3D data set. This is an example of our macro CT system where we have the reflection type target and the transmission target and here we have the stage where the sample is mounted and here we have our flat panel detector. This is our nano CT system that is made for smaller samples where we have the transmission um, target that can scan um, up to um, voltage of 180 kV and also this one here scans up to 240 kV. And also here we have the stage and we have the flat uh, panel detector. X-rays are produced in the, in the X-ray source that consists of a, a voltage supply, a cathode filament and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and an anode target and these are enclosed in a vacuum chamber. Yeah. The X-rays are produced when electrons that are accumulated on the filament grid are accelerated by voltage towards the anode target. And the sudden stop or interaction with the anode target produces X-rays in a form of brainstrolling or characteristic radiation. With the character with the brainstrolling, the incoming electrons do not interfere with any electron in the anode target. However, the incoming um, beam of electrons um, either either um, stopped um, or slows down or move around the nucleus. And the change or the decrease in energy is converted or given off as X-rays. Or therefore, the change in kinetic energy is converted into X-rays. Therefore, the Bramstrolling is determined by the change in kinetic energy of the electrons. With the characteristic radiation, we have the incoming electron that um, knocks out an electron in the lower orbital, leaving a blank space in the quantum state that needs to be filled. And in, and in order to conserve the energy that is lost, the, um, the electron from a higher orbital will drop down to fill the energy in the lower orbital. And to conserve the energy that it uses, um, the energy is given off as X-rays. Now, once we have the, pro uh, the production of X-rays, they are then um, um, given off or the X-ray source will generate the X-rays and they are projected through and around the, the rotating samples. The beam of, uh, of X-rays that are produced, they lose intensity when they interact with the material that is being scanned. And the, the X-ray beam interacts with the material um, in, in five ways. But in this presentation, I will focus on the Compton effect and the photoelectric effect because this um, determines the contrast um, of an image that we see on the detector or in the projection images that we later reconstruct to make 3D um, data sets. With the Compton effect, the incoming electron injects an electron in the outer orbital and the X-ray is deflected. And this is recorded as noise as it records or gives more information. And this phenomenon is dependent on the, um, or is not dependent on the atomic density of the material. 
but it is inversely proportional to the X-ray energy, meaning that increase in energy will decrease the Kempton effect and um, as a result decrease the noise. The photoelectric effect is uh, responsible for the generation of contrast of the sample that is being scanned. And in this, um, with this effect, we have the incoming um, X-ray that injects um, an electron in the in the lower orbital and it is completely absorbed and the atom is ionized. The ejected electron is called a photoelectron. And therefore, to gain the stability, the outer shell will, um, or the outer electron will drop down to fill the inner vacancy, creating low energy characteristic um, X-ray. The photo, uh, photoelectric effect depends on both the X-ray energy and the density of the material that is being scanned. And with this phenomena, the energy must be equal or greater to the binding energy of the orbital electron. And increase in energy will decrease the photoelectric effect, uh, meaning that if we increase the energy, we will then decrease the contrast that we'll be able to see. The absorption of X-rays depends on the density of the material or the atomic density of the material and the thickness. Dense material, as shown in A, will absorb a lot of um, X-rays and will appear darker on the X-ray detector. And in B, we have a material that has less um, atomic density and it will absorb less X-rays as compared to C and therefore creating a, a contrast between the two materials. The absorption increases with the density and in this case we can see um, that if we have a silicon matrix and a, ta and a tungsten in, 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 in a sample, the silica will absorb less X-rays as compared to the tungsten and therefore this peak or the two peaks will show us the contrast in the material that we are scanning. This is another example where we have a ball point with a tungsten uh, point and we have the brass that is made of copper and zinc and the plastic. So in this case, we'll be able to differentiate um, the contrast between tungsten and brass because tungsten will absorb a lot more x-rays as compared to the brass and therefore we can distinguish the two, the two materials. And when we have brass and the plastic, the plastic will absorb less x-rays compared to the brass and in this case we will see um, a, a contrast in the image that we are scanning. Now that we've covered the fundamental and in principle of x-ray inspection, I will then continue into the computer tomography scanning procedures, starting with the sample preparation and mounting. When it comes to mounting, Micro CT requires very little, if any, preparation at all. And usually a sample can be scanned exactly how it's provided. And this is because of the rotating sample design of the industrial CT scanners. It is just important to load the sample correctly to, to avoid any movement during scanning. And usually the sample mounting involves loading a sample in a low density material such as the floral form as seen here or a PVC pipe. With the Nano CT system, we usually lo um, load the sample on a glass rod and just make sure that the sample is mounted on a low density material. When it comes to sample size and, and, and the resolution, Careful selection of the resolution becomes the first major uh, factor affecting the macro CT scanning quality. And when estimating the best possible resolution for a, uh, for a sample of a known dimension, it is important to note that the optimal resolution is a factor a thousand smaller than the width of the sample. For instance, a sample with a width of 100 millimeters has an optimal resolution of approximately a thousand microns. This is based on the standard to use that we only use a thousand pixels out of 2000 available pixels of the detector. And this is to uh, minimize the possible artifacts from the edges. This is due to two reasons. First, the cone beam has a reduced intensity near the edges. And secondly, the cone beam geometry results in a non-ideal reconstruction away from the central slices. And both of this reason, it is suggested to use only the middle of the detector 
to minimize the artifact and reduce the contrast near the edges. The overall voxel size of macro CT image is dependent on the magnification and the object size being scanned. This is related to the distance of the sample from the X-ray source and the detector. In this um, image here, we have the X-ray source, object, and the detector. And in order to achieve a high resolution, the sample needs to be closer to the X-ray source. However, careful consideration needs to be placed that during scanning at a high resolution, when the sample rotates 360 degrees, that it shouldn't hit the X-ray source. In order to get a, um, a full sample in the field review, it needs to be further away from the X-ray source that we can be able to see it in the detector. And in this sense, when it rotates 360 degrees, it still remains in the field review. And therefore, in, the, in this case, we'll be scanning the sample at a lower resolution. However, a higher resolution can be obtainable by moving the sample a little bit closer to the X-ray source that when we rotate that the region of interest can still be inside um, the field of view. When it comes to the X-ray spot size or the focal spot, this is an area on the unknown target that is striped by the electrons emitting X-rays. The focal size is increased by the voltage and the current supply. And this is what um, we need or the increase in voltage is needed in order to have high energy um, X-rays. In principle, the, fo the, the focal size or the spot size should be equal or less than the voxel resolution to increase the edge sharpness between the material that is being scanned. For example, if the spot size becomes larger than the chosen voxel size, the spatial resolution of the system becomes poorer. And that means that fewer details can be seen despite the good voxel size. When it comes to scan time, a major consideration is the acquisition time of a single projection image. And this differs from system to system due to the detector sensitivity. A typical image acquisition in a working cabinet system with a 16-bit flat panel detector is 500 milliseconds, and this differs from system to system. And to obtain the highest possible scan quality, a full dynamic range of the detector should be used. By doing so, the image contrast is maximized by raising the image quality um, or the image acquisition time to near the saturation of the detector for a particular X-ray setting that is being used. If the image acquisition is too low, the resulting contrast will also be low, resulting in um, grainy imaging in some extreme cases. And in this image, we can see um, from HF, we have A that was scanned at three minutes and um, F um, four minutes. And we can see here the quality and the edge sharpness, the quality being Q1 and the uh, sharpness being um, Q2, that when we, when we increase the um, image acquisition, the contrast or the, quality, the overall quality of the image also increases. To scan parameters, the X-ray voltage highly depends on the type of material and the composition of the sample that is being scanned. The most optical material discrimination is usually obtained by using lower voltages. However, the X-ray penetration values might be too low in the case of dense material and thereby causing noise and artifacts. It is therefore um, advisable that for biological sample, the range of, um, or the voltage range to be used can be between, uh, be between 30 and 100, and for small rocks and light metals can be 60 to 150 kV. And when scanning large rocks and heavy materials, the voltage can be 60 and 240 kV. Once the sample is loaded and the settings are chosen, the 2D projection images can be acquired. The scanning itself is done automatically with no user interaction. And during the scanning, the beam of X-rays are projected through and around the rotating sample at 360 degrees, and the attenuated X-rays are collected by the 2D detector to create the projection images. After all projection images are obtained, a 3D volume can be, can be reconstructed. 
The reconstruction involves uh, um, the mapping of each voxel using the attenuated coefficient data obtained during scanning. The voxels are primitive elements of 3D structures providing information of position and density of the object features. The mapping is done by the FELTCAM filtered bed projection algorithm, where each voxel represents a local attenuated coefficient. And during this reconstruction, each vox, for each voxel, a gray value is assigned. After construction, the reconstructed data set can be visualized by volume rendering. And this is typically conducted in a 3D analysis software. And it involves using a user-defined thresholding value or a gray value gradient for a more advanced phase determination. The thresholding determines the boundary um, between the object and the air so that a surface can be assigned to the scanned object. The determination takes place within each voxel of the 3D model. Some possible image quality problems and artifacts can occur during the scanning process and also the and also the reconstruction process. Here I'm only going to present some of the typical artifacts that can occur during these processes. These are two slides images of a chameleon um, showcasing um, some different artifacts. At A, the sample was scanned with a dense uh, material causing some tricky artifact resulting in a low image quality scan. At B, the sample was scanned with too low voltage, um, causing some bright variation around the dense object in the image. At C, the sample was scanned with too high voltage, resulting in poor contrast between the materials. Um, D is a typical example of uh, some wrong settings that can be um, chosen or that can be selected during the, the, the reconstruction software uh, or the reconstruction process. At D, this shows a clamping settings that was um, selected that causes an over-exaggeration of the um, high-density material within the specimen. And then at E, this is an incorrect offset correction um, um, number that was used during the construction process, which will result in a very blurry um, image. And then the last one at F, this is an almost perfect um, scan. However, um, it shows some, some of the double edges or some double line, which shows some uh, that, this, um, that the specimen actually moved during scanning, resulting in um, some double lines or blurry lines that could not be corrected during the reconstruction process. In terms of application, um, CT is applied in a wide variety of fields, and in this presentation, I will outline some of the applications that we have done here at the Sergio CT Scanner Facility. Do enjoy the video, and I'll be available after the video for any possible questions that you have. Enjoy!